uh, we are doing a deeper dive into Patsy. Um, so if you weren't here before, uh, please do watch the first video in this series and watch the second one. Otherwise, you really won't know what we're going over here. Um, but we've understand uh, or we've understood that Patsy is a great tool for working with data uh, and transforming it in statistical ways. Uh, we want to figure out how we can make those transformations and uh, what are the do's and don'ts. Um, so I'm going to show you how the Patsy formulas work and hopefully this will give you a good clue as to how these transformations work. Um, so let's get started. We've got a lot of material to go over. Um, we'll go ahead, we'll import our design matrix and design matrices as before. We'll make a little bit of demo data and then we'll just jump right in. Um, so the first thing that we do is we make a D matrices. Uh, the only thing that's different about a D matrix D's is you'll have a Y and a tilde and then factors. Uh, so you'll have a single output, a tilde, and then factors. So whatever's on that single output, whatever's on the left, that's going to be your outcome. That's going to be your target. And whatever's on the right side, and this could be a lot of things, is going to be the predictors. Uh, and these will come up with two design matrices or two data frames, depending on what you want. It's the only difference is, is that you'll see this tilde in D matrices. Okay, design matrix, normal. Uh, in order to include multiple factors, we use the plus. Uh, the plus is sort of treated as an and. So we get x1 and x2, the two factors that we want. If we include two of the same factors, Patsy will be smart and will say, hey, you didn't probably mean to do that, so I'm only going to include one. Okay. We can also include interactions. An interaction is written using a colon. An interaction is used to capture a higher level, higher order feature. Uh, so this interaction could be of a categorical to a categorical or a categorical to a numeric. You can also do categorical to, or you can do numeric to numeric, but the only thing a numeric to numeric will do is it will go ahead and say, uh, let's multiply them together. So it's just a, like a fancy way of multiplying them together. Not super useful. Um, if you interact with yourself, uh, you're just going to get yourself back. That's it. Um, you would almost think that you should get yourself squared back, but you only get yourself back. Um, interactions, again, uh, I, I really stress, uh, read Intro to Statistical Learning. This will, this will give you a great uh, uh, basis for this type of knowledge, but an interaction is order to uh, sort of characterize a higher level feature. You, you might assume that uh, you know, being a student has an effect, and also having an income has an effect on your FICO score. These two things have an effect. But they have some higher order effect, some nonlinear effect that happens when you include both of them. So a student with a super or with uh, a, uh, an income will go ahead and it will ameliorate that, that sort of negative rating of student on your FICO score. Um, so interactions. Um, you can go ahead and you can interact multiple terms. It's distributive. So we get x1 plus x2, interact a plus b. So we get x1 with the a's, x1 with the b's, x2 with the a's, x2 with the b's. So what do you think? You can go ahead and chain uh, interactions. They just interact with everything. You'll get a single term out of chaining with interactions. Um, I guess notice up here that the categorical variables get transformed into multiple columns. Um, the categorical variables don't need to get transformed into multiple columns. There are different ways to encode them. We're going to be talking about encoding before. But the basic way to encode them is using treat encoding or dummy coding, um, which I'll talk about in, in sort of the encoding lecture. Um, that being said, all you really need to know is that Patsy looks at these qualitative features that you've written down. It transforms them into quantitative features in a logical way. Um, so this is another way to make really great use of Patsy to make statistical transformations to data. Um, okay. uh, you can go ahead and you can use all sorts of brackets and stuff like that for this interaction. It's just going to give you kind of what you think. Um, star is shorthand for, uh, for uh, x1 plus a plus x1 interact a. So you'll, you'll see this here. a, x1, x1 interact a. So shorthorn for that. You can interact uh, numeric as well. It does exactly what you think. Or you can star numeric as well. You can, you can do multiple stars. Uh, they'll do exactly what you think. So we'll get an A1, we'll get an X1, we'll get an X2 term, right? We'll get one, one of these things. And we'll get higher orders. We'll get an X1A1, we'll get an X2A1, uh, and then we'll get an X1X2. 
And then of course we'll get the third order term. So we'll, so we'll get kind of like the full power set of these sorts of things. If you star yourself, you'll just get yourself. The next thing that we're gonna go over is the minus. Minus is super simple. It just takes things off the, the left-hand side. Um, so remember x1 star x2 is x1, x2 plus x1 interact x2. If we minus the x1, what do we get? We just get an x2 and then x1 uh, interact x2. If you minus something that's not there, nothing will happen. If you minus the only thing that's left, you'll get an error. Uh, whew. Sorry. Uh, the next thing, uh, you also have the set minus. A set minus is just a fancy way of saying, uh, let's say x1 and then include x1 interact x2. I never use this. Uh, this was uh, in here for legacy reasons. It's for backward compatibility. Um, this is used when you have some information that's nested. So x2 has necessarily information that's nested inside x1. I never use this myself. For me, it just makes more sense to write x1 uh, star x2 minus x2. Um, it is uh, sort of distributive, as, as you would think. It's not left-hand side distributive. It, it, you get some weird results. Uh, so you'd expect to see uh, perhaps a y interact x1 and a y interact x2. You, you don't. Okay. Uh, the final thing that I also don't use, but I'll just show it to you regardless, is the uh, self-interact. Uh, self-interact will self-interact however many times you put on the right-hand side. Um, ooh, looks like I'm dying. Oh, okay, hold on one second, guys. We'll just go without me. Um, so... Uh, so this will just go ahead and it will interact whether you've got it on the, on the right hand side uh, or however many times you've got it right here. Nah, it's useful. Uh, I've, I've not used it before, but I, I can imagine it would be a little bit more useful than writing out this thing a lot of times. Um, okay. In order to deal with intercepts, uh, we go ahead and we can do this in a lot of ways. The minus one is a simple way of getting rid of an intercept. The minus one, uh, plus zero, or minus minus zero are all good ways to do it themselves. Uh, down here I've written down some, some other just ways to, to write out formula. Um, so you can have a y with an x, you can have y x x x, <laughs> you can have a y minus x, these are all valid formula. But the one thing that you'll notice here is you don't see a d matrix. Where did that go? Instead we're using a model desk. So a model desk will take whatever formula you have and it will save it. So it will save it in a Patsy formula. So this Patsy formula is using these programmatic tools that I'll show you right below in order to interact with your data in a programmatic way. So we'll go ahead and it'll save like, hey, this formula might be used later on. We're not using it now, but let's consider. Uh, you can put as complicated stuff as you want and you can even include things that are nonsensical, like this sort of like stuff in the bottom. Um, what we can do is we can go ahead and take this formula and we can describe it in a simple way. So if we take this very complicated formula, we fit it into the model desk and we do desk.describe, this will go ahead and spit out this very useful uh, description of what our formula actually turned out to be. Um, now you might be asking why, why even use model desk? It doesn't really seem useful. Um, the reason why you want to use model desk is not really when you're actually working with uh, string formula, but it's when you're working with programmatic formula. So let's say you are a data scientist and you've made this really great model. And now you want to make this model productionalized. And the thing is your model has 70 features. Okay, 70 features, that's a lot of features. Maybe it's too many, but it has 70 features. And you want to go ahead and you want to write the model description in Patsy. So I'm going to have to write x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4, blah, 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 all the way out. And you don't want to be doing this using string concatenation. So you don't want to just say like x1 the string plus you know x2 the string plus x3 the string. This is kind of like a really bad way to do it. So they've invented this other way to do it. It's a little bit more programmatic. It's using model desk. So I'll go ahead and I'll make some demo data. I'll go ahead and show you I can go ahead and look into this demo data using two ways. One way is lookup factor and the other way is eval factor. Lookup factor has a couple of uh, good things. It has force categorical, so you can force it to be a categorical. You can give it a contrast, which is a way of um, transforming that categorical data. You can say the number of levels of this categorical data. Um, the normal way to go ahead and uh, look up a factor from your data is using eval factor. Eval factor will take this string and it will treat it as uh, a new factor in your data. 
So I've gone ahead and I've made an A lookup factor, an X transform factor, and in my model desk object, I've gone ahead and evaluated it. So I've got this whatever something here, and then I've got term uh, lookup or A lookup term X transform term A lookup X transform, and and sort of look what happened. Um, I get A lookup. A lookup goes ahead and it makes these two categorical variables right here, A and A1 or A1 and A2, right? These two columns were made by that. The next one, X transform, was made by this column right here. This is really sweet. So we go ahead and we eval this factor. This is exactly that factor. Um, and then the final column was made using the interaction. Notice I just went uh, made a comma here in order to have the interaction um, of this lookup factor and this eval factor. So I programmatically made a way to uh, compose and create new model descriptions. Um, and this is super useful. Uh, I can't emphasize how useful it is until I go ahead and I show you the down, uh, what's down below. And this is the add predictors formula. Um, this is just something that I made really quick. Um, the idea behind it is that, hey, uh, I'm in that situation again where I want to include 30, or in this case, 10 X's in my prediction. Um, and you can even include this to 30, right? You know, I want to include this, and I don't want to go ahead and write out all 30 of them. So what do I do? What I go ahead and I do is I make a model description from a base formula. This base formula could be completely empty. That's going to be the normal description. And to the right-hand side, which is the factors, I'll go ahead and I'll add a term for each factor that I go ahead and feed in in the extra predictors. So how does this look? It looks like this. So now I've got x1, x2, x3, x4, x brrr, all the way up to 29. Um, so if ever you find yourself doing string concatenation in order to generate long formula, if ever you find yourself productionalizing Patsy code, the way you want to do it is you want to use a model descriptor object and you want to use these terms. Uh, generally speaking, I would just go ahead and use the eval factor term. It's, it's good enough. Okay, I hope this was super useful. This might have been too in-depth, but this is literally everything. After you've watched this video, you'll know how to use Patsy in and out. There are a couple of extra features that are useful for Patsy. One of them is categorical encoding, another is stateful transformations, and the final one is splines. I'm going to be going over all three of those in the next couple of videos. But for now, I hope you've learned a ton, and I hope you stick with it. Okay, thanks guys.